to not be a conspiracy theorist in four easy steps Vlad the Nazarite Gandhi. One day ago, middle of dot, nine minute read. How to not be a conspiracy theorist, aka extremist. Conspiracy theories are more and more common these days as our society strays farther and farther from the truth and the self-evidently right people who know what reality is are more and more detached from the squalid lives of average people who, in their completely unfounded mistrust, turn to these false and preposterous theories for meaning and comfort in a confusing and chaotic world. Here are a few easy tips to remember in order to avoid joining the ranks of these unfit, unwashed, Degenerate persons whose presence will be increasingly unwelcome in polite society if we have our way. 1. Make sure your mainstream, anti-conspiracy reality filter is in place. In order to not be a conspiracy theorist, it's important to ignore and discard all facts and evidence that suggest any sort of conspiracy could be taking place. As we all know, Conspiracies don't ever happen in real life and are self-evidently false and ridiculous. The very fact that the word conspiracy even exists proves that conspiracies don't exist because why would we have a term for something that is a real-life phenomenon? Makes absolutely no sense, right? Conspiracies, like unicorns, elves, fairies, goblins, and sasquatches, are nothing but figments of people's overactive imaginations. Any evidence which purports to suggest one could be occurring is therefore irrelevant and can, and should, be safely filtered out as unimportant. Luckily, most information is pre-filtered before the fact by the trusted, authoritative, corporate news sources, so that evidence suggesting cover-ups, or highly improbable coincidences is already removed for you, as a free service. Which brings us to our next tip. 2. Limit or narrow your data set based on the currently accepted narrative. When trying to come to an understanding of what's happening in the world, the most dangerous thing you can do is to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Because, as an ordinary, average person, you lack the proper training and aren't intelligent enough to evaluate and perceive reality for yourself, it's really best to avoid going down rabbit holes if at all possible and it is far Far better and safer to place blind trust in authoritative channels of information, all of which are run by properly trained, uncompromisable professionals who are experts on absolutely everything, and to just accept the headlines at face value. But if you absolutely must research a contentious topic for yourself, it's of crucial importance to narrow your dataset to only the information that supports whatever is the narrative du jour. That way you can rest assured you will be safeguarded from inadvertently being led away from the safety of acceptable opinion and radicalized from exposure to alternative facts. Of course, Please make sure your filter is intact and fully functioning before embarking on such a dangerous endeavor. 3. Ignore human history and recent history. Historical context is dangerous and can lead one to the delusion of thinking that because in the past there have always been people who craved and lusted after power over others and were willing to do terrible things in its pursuit while creating untold death, suffering and human misery in the process that this is still the case today. The reality is that, with the exception of a growing number of backwards reprobates and tinpot dictators, we live in a civilized society now, a global, new world order, if you will. The truth is that people with tens or hundreds of billions of dollars in their bank accounts and more yachts, mansions, fancy cars, and creepy private underage sex islands than they could ever enjoy in several lifetimes aren't really seeking more power, domination, and control. They aren't seeking to maintain the power they have at any cost nor are they willing to plunge countless people into unspeakable misery to maintain the status quo. Neither will they stop at nothing in the maniacal pursuit of their shared objective of solidifying their global hegemony. Quite the contrary, they are really just trying to give back through their philanthropic efforts. Also, a note on recent history. There may be times where the narrative from the present completely contradicts one from the recent past, and often in multiple ways. Ignore this completely. In fact, 
The safest approach to staying on message and not running afoul of the predominant groupthink is to just memory hole anything before last week, but as long as you never put any current events in any historical context, whether recent or remote, you'll be safely ensconced within the official, socially acceptable consensus reality. 4. Mock, Dismiss, and Ridicule Finally, and perhaps most importantly, in order to fully and completely differentiate yourself from the tinfoil hat, conspiratorial dregs of society, it is vital that you actively mock, dismiss and look down on anyone who does believe in conspiracies. This one may sound easy and obvious, but it is actually a subtle art form. Firstly, it's often easy to identify conspiracy theorists because of their ridiculous, idiotic tendency to refer to a nebulous V equals the hierarchy enslaving you whom they foolishly believe are controlling things and wielding hidden power and influence from behind the scenes. Or in some cases, fringe conspiracy lunatics will misconstrue overt agendas led by billionaires and elite class members as nefarious when they are in fact 100% benign and benevolent. In this case, a really quick and efficient way to stop the conspiracy loon in his tracks and dispatch with his incessant, incoherent ravings is to ridicule the notion that there is any such they at all. Simply ask who the they is and watch their entire edifice grumble as they sputter out in complete frustrated inability to provide a succinct explanation of who they is and how they are planning it all. Everyone knows that rich oligarchs and their various servants in government, academia and the press don't have common interests and certainly don't work together, that is in concert, to advance them at the expense of others. There's class warfare, all right, but it's my class, the rich class, that's making war, and we're winning. Warren Buffett A quote by Warren Buffett Warren Buffett, there s class warfare. All right, but it's my class, the rich class, that's making war, and we're www.gooderads.com. These capitalists generally act harmoniously and in concert to fleece the people. Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, quote, Abraham Lincoln, quote, These capitalists generally act harmoniously and in concert to fleece the people. Source, libquotes.com. Also remember that anyone who believes one conspiracy theory, automatically believes every other conspiracy theory that exists no matter how absurd, foolish or ridiculous. Regardless of how sensibly or reasonably they attempt to comport themselves, how rationally or logically they attempt to present their arguments and alternative facts, or how they adamantly insist that the term, conspiracy theory was popularized by the CIA through their mockingbird agents in the media to discredit those who were questioning the Warren Commission report on the JFK assassination. When dealing with someone who espouses a conspiracy theory, you must never forget they are in reality a credulous person who can be safely dismissed and compared to the most unhinged fringe weirdo in existence and their arguments equated with the most far out fringe beliefs. For example, if someone mentions what they claimed is a proven false flag, you could simply bring up the flat earth theory or the fake moon landing theory or QAnon and attribute this belief to them as well. If someone says they don't believe the official story of 9-11, you could ask them if they think the planes were holograms generated by lizard people and accuse them of anti-Semitism. If someone mentions they are concerned about experimental, emergency authorized medical products with no manufacturer liability, you might label them an anti-VAXXER, casually mention 5G did not cause the virus or tell them how silly they are to think anyone like Bill Gates would want to implant them with microchips even if they said nothing at all about those things. Establishing whether or not the person espousing one outlandish friend conspiracy actually believes in any of these other crackpot ideologies is immaterial, as all their beliefs can be assumed to be arbitrary and based on irrational pathology. How to spot a conspiracy theorist? In essence, just take the most exaggerated, outrageous sounding claim that leaps to mind and which you associate with whatever they're saying and reflexively, aggressively attempt to associate it with them. You can always call them a tinfoil hat and post an absurd gif of Alex Jones going bonkers, but there are many 
many ways to go about this. Keep in mind that this isn't actually a cheap straw man attack. The thing to remember is that all beliefs that aren't part of the narrative of authoritative, corporate news sources are fringe beliefs and all fringe beliefs are to be regarded as identical, lumped together as one thing, and discarded. They are never to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis or evaluated on their own merits. This is because there is no appreciable difference between any fringe beliefs, and anyone who holds any fringe belief isn't to be regarded as irrational, thinking individual with her own unique perspective arrived at through careful introspection, consideration of evidence and broad sets of data patiently gathered and painstakingly evaluated over time, but rather as someone with a kind of pathology that simply makes them susceptible to erroneous, non-evidence-based ideas about the world. They are all basically comparable to deranged nutbags like David Icke or toxic, bloviating windbags like Alex Jones. So you don't need to listen to them and can ridicule them accordingly using the stock thought cancelling cliches. Or if you like, get creative and invent your own not straw man insults which the trusted intelligence assets in the corporate media will relentlessly shove in your, er, um, generously provide for you. Typical debunked conspiracy meme. The upshot of all this is that nothing can be accepted as true until such time as it is generally accepted as true and you can't yourself be safe from ridicule and or persecution unless you stay well within those daily shrinking boundaries. Fortunately the trusted sources within the completely uncorruptible institution that is the corporate, billionaire-owned media are there to manage the narrative for us and enforce what can and can't be accepted as true, and anyone who attempts to push against this in any way simply can't be taken seriously as a rational actor and definitely cannot be trusted. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent, and that's power. Because they control the minds of the masses. The press is so powerful in its image-making role, if you aren't careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Malcolm X A quote by Malcolm X Malcolm X The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make www.goodorads.com If you can keep these four simple tips in mind, you should be extremely well protected and fully inoculated against the insidious influence of conspiracy theories and extreme ideologies. But in order to help you in this regard and to further assist you in ingraining these concepts and in programming yourself to reflexively reject any and all dangerous counter-narratives you may encounter in the wild, and in order to make 100% certain you are well armored and fully protected against all forms of fringe, conspiracy extremism, here is a simple easy to remember acronym, FLIN filter out fringe alternative facts purporting to support the existence of conspiracies, easily accomplished by consuming only corporately owned authoritative media. Limit your data within the acceptable range of reality, as defined by the narrative du jour. Ignore history. Stay completely ahistorical in your framing of events. Mock others who don't conform to these basic guidelines as credulous fools and loonies. Congratulations! If you've internalized the steps outlined above and incorporated them into your daily cognitive processes, you'll be well equipped to avoid ever being seen as a conspiracy theorist. But finally just to make it all concrete, I would like to leave you with one particularly tragic and disturbing example of a once respected academic and author who strayed from the narrow way of well t-r-o-d-d-e-n, time-honored, acceptable opinion, from the point of view of the non-existent t-h-e-y, unmoored himself from the sublime, supine security of intellectual sycophantism and compulsive, obligatory narrative genuflecting and wandered foolishly and heedlessly into the dark and murky morass of fringe conspiracism. Let his tragic story serve as an example and as a lesson to never, ever be like this man.